friends this is Jamie um, I want to welcome you to my channel today um, today I'm just going to be giving you a flip through of this book um, I had posted it to my community tab and told you guys that I was going to order it because I was very curious about it it's called creature corners a book to trace and color uh, by Brittany Meredith and here is the back side, Trace, Color, and Create. And if you need an ISBN, it's very small, but it's right there. And I got this on Amazon, so the US Amazon. There's a glare because there's a little bit of shine to this. It's not like a shiny, shiny cover, but it's not matte either, so it does have a little glare to it. But once we start opening it, there will be no glare. So, um, right away I noticed that everything is in blue ink. Uh, so, as we're flipping through, we'll be able to kind of look at some stuff. Um, right here it says, most common ways to ink are the variety of inking tools such as these. And there's a fine line marker which creates lines like this. There's a brush pen that creates lines like this, and a fountain pen that creates lines like this. And you can see the three different cats and how the different shading has been done with different pens. After you finish inking your page, it's time to add some color. Whether you choose to color pencils, markers, paint, your colors will pop against the dark ink. So what they, I'm thinking what they suggest is you want to use an ink that's not going to smear with your mediums. And what I would recommend is probably pens like the Micron pen because they don't smear. Um, Tombow makes a good one. Like I have these ones. Uh, they're Tombow Fudu, Fudin Skuki or something like that. Um, but they make different ones out there. It says, don't worry about inking or tracing the blue lines perfectly to prevent transfer for heavy markers and paint through pages. Slip a blank sheet of paper behind um, or test it on. Test on like a separate piece for bleeding purposes. Like you could actually test it on this because there's nothing on the back of that. Give yourself freedom to explore different inking tools. Each one creates different visual effects and will feel, feel different in your hand. Ink can be unforgiving. If you feel you made a mistake, allow yourself the creative freedom to incorporate the mistake into your working turn it into a happy accident. So if you look at like all these different cats, like if you look at the grass, you see grass here. This one's like a full, thick, just solid line. And this one's more like a shaded grass. And they've done lots of dark shadowing on this guy. This just has some here and there, almost like block shadowing. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little because it's blue and I want you guys to be able to see. Uh, so the designs are very intricate. I know this isn't showing the full, full page, but I want you guys to be able to see what you're looking at. There are some really tiny things I'm gonna tell you. Um, it's not light like Erie's Trace Around the World books. It's all blue inked, so you can go in like they showed before and add inking to create shadows and depth and like, like almost like a grayscale. Or if you wanted, you could just color these straight. The paper is very smooth and they're single sided. This is the shoe box. They're very adorable images, but like I said, this is very fine stuff. I mean, look how, look at my finger compared to that shoe. My fingers are not that big. Like, here's the pen. A micron pen, if you have a micron pen. Look how small. So, I would think you would definitely want to use fine liners on some of this stuff. 
Now this one has bigger stuff in it. But I think if you just colored it as is and didn't add any extra inking, it would still look really cool. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a little. There we go. Just want you guys to be able to see pretty much the whole page. But like, I mean, this isn't too bad, but all this tiny stuff, that kind of freaks me out a little. But sometimes I'm in the mood for coloring really tiny things. So this one's not too bad. Things are, like on this shelf, they're not super tiny to me. So this wouldn't be too bad to color. This one, however, I mean, look at all these tiny little tiny things. You would want to use a water-based marker or a pencil that has a very sharp point because, yeah, bleed out and stuff. But they're very unique pictures. I mean, I haven't seen anything like this in other books because it has a room, obviously, but it has characters in it, and they're pretty much animals and doing things, which is awesome. A tea kettle. There's all these little mailing boxes in here. All these little jars. You could go in and make them all different colors if you wanted to. It's called the Teapot Tea Shop. So I guess it's a tea place where you can buy tea. Makes sense. It's in a tea kettle. Oh, here's one with a big old telescope. That's cool. Oh, here's the mail service two little critters here and then we've got this animal here oh right here there is a bunny you can't tell like some things blend together because of the blue ink but I think as soon as you start coloring it it will just pop off the page and then of course we have this postal mount this is a sloth so the post office master is a sloth is that indi any indication how fast the postal service is just kidding. Uh, so the next one we have is like, uh, this looks like a little cart that has a carousel on it. And it's a signature scent, so it must be her like perfume cologne wagon, I guess. She looks like a skunk to me because of her tail. Here's an artist, and he is a fox because it says the fox. Fox tail paints. Vinyl records. She's jamming out. He's just chilling. And this is like on a like cart. Like here's the little scooter part. And then it's almost like a bookmobile, but for records. The drive in. And right here, this is totally blank. So if you're an artist and you want to draw in a movie, or even if you can't draw, and there is a movie title that you maybe want to put in there or something. You could print it from your printer and trace it on there yourself if you want. There's the coffee cats. See right here it's already dark so I don't think it needs additional shading if you don't want. I'm going to turn this. And again see how it's already shaded in some spots and this one's cool it has motorcycles hogs garage it this book is very intimidating just because of all the small things like this is a lantern hut there's a turtle but look at all these different lanterns in here I mean you literally, if you had like really bad vision, you would want to get like a magnified, some people have them for like diamond painting, to like magnify what you're coloring so you could get into every little thing if you wanted to. Here again, look at all these little fruits. But it is like a really cute page and I think once it's colored, it would look awesome. 
there's a little camping page. Here's all our camping gear. See, something like this wouldn't be as intimidating because it's not tiny, tiny. And you're just coloring object by object. Here is a haunted house that got the ghouls in. Kites. She's cute. She's supposed to be a dolphin. Look, there's a fin. Look at her faces. So she's a dolphin and she's got an elephant kid and maybe that's a fox kid following. But all of her kites are sea life kites. That's really creative. Ooh, this one would be a challenge. This is the greenhouse. So every single thing in there. Let me, I'm going to zoom up a little. See all those little things inside the glass? No way would you want to trace all that. You, would, I mean, it would be an accomplishment just to color all that. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back out, guys. I'm trying not to make you dizzy. I turned off my dishwasher so you guys would be able to hear me. This one is an outdoor gym. That one's really cool. Not so many tiny things on here except for the leaves. Paper folds. So like origami, like an origami hut, the gem mine. So we've got lots of different ways you could do gems and jewels and birthstones. And he's got, I think of this is like an ex, excavator, excavator, Iggy's gem mine. This looks like a spa of some sort. Look at this lion. He's chilling. And then we've got a koala sticking his head out. If you can't tell, there's someone under this waterfall too. It almost reminds me of animals that may be like on Zootopia or something because they all have their like little things. Here's the archaeologist. He is a snake. These uh, are skateboarders. Got a variety of animals there. Uh, wipe out. So we've got different skateboards. Who done it? So this is like the crime scene uh, investigation type of Sherlock Holmes, Dick Tracy type of feel. Here we've got a concert. Everybody loves a good rock concert. Fire patrol. So we've got a fire engine and we've got some firefighters. And inside their buildings, there's got a lot of little tiny things. But they're not nearly as tiny as like that fruit page. That fruit page was pretty tiny. This guy's going down the pole. This one would be a nice one to do because... There are tiny elements, but nothing that seems too freaky, like overwhelming. It's called Mythic wood Woodworks. So maybe all these things are supposed to be like tribal masks, maybe, out of wood. She's on a giant crab, or he's on a giant crab. So this is one of those that's going to have all the small things, because candy is going to be itty bitty. So you could just color that section all one color if you wanted to. Or you could just experiment with different things and see what you could come up with. This one's called Bookshop on the Water. So we've got like a boat, tons of little books, and they are open. You can tell that someone's in there reading. We've got a little cafe thing on the top here telescope. That one has lots of tiny stuff. Tiny tinies. This one kind of reminds me of like a comic. It looks like we have different styles of books. Western, horror, romance, cyberpunk, fantasy, dawn chaser. This is like a comic book so how wholesome. Look at this little crab, clack, clack, clack. 
This guy is Horn and Hammer. So he must be the blacksmith. He's got lots of swords and like different things inside his like, it's like a half of a boat. If you can tell it's like been cut in half and it's like setting. Next one is the bank. And this one actually, if I look at it, it doesn't look like there's too many like extreme details. I mean, there's some fine lines here and there. We've got a couple badgers right here. They're the bank robbers. And right here is a hammerhead shark. He must be the clerk. And then we have two guys right here. This is some type of bird, and I think this is like a porcupine. Think. <laughs> here we have the barbershop. Barbershop has a lot of tiny things, like through the flowers and inside the shelves and cupboards. Like I said, if you want to do all these little tiny things, I would suggest like a fine liner. Uh, my favorite fine liners that are um, not alcohol, just like a water-based one, is the Stetler ones or the Stabio ones. Holy crap. This is called the claw, guys. Let me show you how tiny this is. I've got to zoom in. Look at how tiny. This is my finger. Look at that. Let me show. Here's the pen. The bottom of a pen. And this is the 05. Look how tiny these things are. I can barely see it and I'm wearing my glasses. I would totally <laughs> need like a magnifying glass. There's no way I would want to outline all this stuff. I'd be lucky if I colored all this stuff. <laughs> this one, <sighs> I would just have to be having a really good vision day, guys. <laughs> Let me go ahead and zoom out on that. There we go. Of course, it's the last page because, yeah, no, it's got to be the last page because it's super tiny. And right here, acknowledgments. Um, it's just some information uh, that you can read yourself about the author. So this is about Brittany Meredith. She's an illustrator and storyteller. Growing up, um, she loved to draw and read copious amounts of manga, and she always knew she wanted to pursue a career in art. After graduating in 2017 with a bachelor's degree in art from a convent college, she continued her education by pursuing a master in fine arts in the sequel, or sequential art of Savannah College of Art and Design. She was raised and continues to live in Georgia, close to her family and with Theo the cat. So her cat's name is Theo. Currently, she is planning more art projects and enjoying long walks in good weather. She invites you to follow her on Instagram, and she has an Instagram account. So that is it, guys. This is Creature Corners. A book to trace in color like I said I when I saw this I was really intrigued because I've never seen anything like this before and I think the best way for me to approach this is I think it's basically a fine liners sharp pencil like a hard pencil like a polychromos something that the lead won't break going in and not necessarily adding additional shading just coloring objects as is because they're so super uber tiny but I think um, I want to try to at least start on one of these pages just so you guys can see what one could look like um, if you guys get this book let me know and I will put uh, my Amazon affiliate link for this book down in the description box um, this is just uh, a little affiliate link it just gives me a little tiny commission if you choose. It's no cost to you. 
Um, if you don't want to use it, that's fine. It just is to help you find the book better, and that would be on the Amazon US. So I hope you guys have a fabulous day, and I hope you enjoyed this book flip. I have another book that is coming that's kind of an unusual one as well, and it should be here tomorrow or the next day. One of the two. And once I get that one, I will do a flip through as well. Have a great one, and I will see you next time. Bye, friends.